come and stand amazed, you people. See how God is reconciled. See his plans of love accomplished. See his gift, this newborn child. See the mighty, weak, and tender. See the word who now is mute. See the sovereign without splendor. See the fullness destitute. The beloved whom we covet in a state of low repute. See how humankind received him. See him wrapped in swaddling bands. Who as Lord of all creation rules the wind by his commands. See him lying in a manger without sign of reasoning. Word of God to flesh surrendered. He is wisdom's crown our king. See how tender our defender at whose birth the angels sing. O oh Lord Jesus, God incarnate, who assumed this humble form. Counsel me and let my wishes to your perfect will conform. Light of life, dispel my darkness. Let your frailty strengthen me. Let your meekness give me boldness. Let your burden set me free. Let your sadness give me gladness. Let your death be life for me. It is a great day this Christmas Sunday, first Sunday after Christmas. Join us in the old faithful hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Isn't it so fitting that we ask the Lord to fill us with the light of day? Because sometimes it can get so dark, so dark that you can't see your way through. That's the effects of sin on our lives and in our lives and through our lives. And so as usual pattern, let us move toward a spirit of confession and let us move beyond the spirit of confession into actual confession. So hear these words. Holy God, you sent a star to guide the Magi to the child Jesus. We confess that we have not followed the light of your word. We have not searched for signs of your love in the world or trusted your good news to be good. We failed to praise your son's birth and refused his peace on earth. We've expected little and hope for less. Forgive our doubt and renew us in all fine desires that we may watch and wait and once more hear the glad story of our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And saints, hear this assurance of pardon that comes to us from the book of Isaiah and Luke. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. People of God, through the coming of Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate, the Lord has comforted and redeemed us Two, in Christ, we receive the salvation of our God. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Saints, receive this good news and live in its peace. And not only receive the good news and live in its peace, share that peace with one another. Greet each other with the holy Merry Christmas, with the holy uh, hello, with the holy fist bump, habari gani, whatever you do, do it digitally and with the people around you so that you're not pronounced a Scrooge. Peace to the uh, tech crew up in balcony. Peace to the drum, little drummer boy. <laughs> Peace uh, to the vocalist and the poinsettia. And the, the, yeah, yeah, it's all God's creation. All of it, I, even though that's full, somebody created it. They don't know, they don't know it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's reformed, baby, ecologically. Okay, I see you. Yes, yes. Peace to you online. I, yes. Oh, Mickey Ono, yes. From Japan, they're watching. And from Benton Harbor, I see you, Arkita. We're praying. And Alice Holloman, we got you covered. We got you covered. Oh, Jay Van Gronigan, yes, we see you. Jen Gainswood, yes. Peace be to uh, every, Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Dr. Lloyd Page. Yes, Kathy Gupson, all of you are watching. Okay, I'm going to get to singing. Thank you. 
Peace. 
for another day, opportunity to be here together in this way. Merry Christmas. I hope you all did have wonderful times and memories and experiences with your family and with those you may have been quarantined with. We do know that this has been a different sort of celebration, and yet we celebrate. Amen. Um, thank you to all of you who came out to witness the Black Nativity. Um, thank you for all of you who uh, worshiped with us on Christmas Eve um, and all the work that went into um, bringing that production together in joy um, and worship together um, on that day and time. So we thank God for that. Um, thank God for all of you, wherever you're worshiping with us from. We're so, so happy to, um, to be able to engage, invite you, and embrace you in this way. Um, I don't really have very many announcements um, for us today. Um, I think that we've kind of been slowing down a bit here around the church for obvious reasons. The one thing I do want to bring to our attention, um, I know that um, we want to send condolences out to um, Angela Perry, to her family, you know, and the passing of her mom. Um, and we know that there's been a great deal of, of loss and, and, and confusion and so forth during this time. So I want to remind you that you can go to the website, and if you feel like you need to be in a space that feels like God is there, like here in our sanctuary, then we do have opportunities for you to actually fill out and ask for a time to be able to come in. We do have a board where you can actually put prayer requests that will go to the prayer team and that when others come, they also can pray. We also have a, a remembrance table, which is an opportunity for us to remember those who um, we've lost during this uh, past year, um, whether that be via COVID or whatever um, particularities might have been. So this is a space, it's just here. <laughs> um, from day to day. So at any point in time, if you think you might need a 30-minute slot or hour slot just to come into the sanctuary and sit and pray and kneel and whatever it is that might be on your heart, then just let us know. And we want to we make that available um, to you. Amen. Um, do you have an announcement, CJ? Me? I do. Yeah. I do. I, um, waiting for the camera to widen up. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> I love you, Gus and guys up there. No, seriously. So those of you who have grown accustomed to worshiping with Maple Avenue over the years, you will know that we borrowed a practice from our sister congregation, Calvary Reformed Church on 8th Street. And so upon next Sunday, if the Lord should tarry, then we will have our historical uh, remembrance and projected service, which... Uh, reminds us of the births that we've had over the years. So if your child was uh, born, uh, we think we have everybody, but make sure you send us a text by Thursday at 1 o'clock. And if you were baptized, we've got the names, but we don't want to miss anybody. If you were baptized at Maple Avenue uh, this past year, uh, 2020, come. We, we want to celebrate that. And if uh, your loved one passed away or somebody uh, from the congregation. We're extending that, though, 
Uh, some of you have experienced exponential death. And so in addition to th those who just passed away at Maple Avenue, we will allow you to send in names and we will have a place for them. If you, I said one o'clock, noon on Thursday. If you get us those names of your loved ones who have passed away that we want to remember, we will remember them in the service and call their name and toll the bell like we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So noon, by noon on Thursday, that doesn't mean send them at noon. That means you can send them right now That's right. if you want to, but by noon. Wonderful. Thank God for that. Amen. And so uh, let us enter into our congregational prayer together. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has come to save us from our sins. We thank you that you made the ultimate sacrifice for us. This amazing, this amazing love is comparable to none. It is the example of all of us to follow. We're thankful. We're thankful for our family and for friends and for living in a place where we can explicitly claim that Jesus Christ, the baby born in a manger, is Lord. That we can rise up and follow and beckon all shepherds, all humble and lowly. We can beckon even the mountains, even the principalities and powers to come and to follow. And so, sweet comforter, would you comfort those who are experiencing loss today? Would you comfort those who long to see the fullness of why you came? Will you comfort those who are yet still on their way and do not quite yet believe the truth of which the angels did sing? Comfort your church, O oh God, that we might be light bearers and instruments in your hand for the healing of nations, for the reconciliation of the world. Visit us now, O oh God, with your peace in order that as we offer our gifts up to you, the gifts of our time, the gifts of our voice, the gifts of our financial resources, whatever gifts that you have invested in us, as we offer them back, may we offer them in peace. Knowing, God, that in your hands, they are good. And that little becomes much when we place it in your hands. And so, God, we thank you for the privilege we have in prayer, for faith to believe beyond what we see because of Christ, our beloved Savior and Lord, in whose name we do pray. Amen. And so at this time, we are going to take up an offering, and while we do that, uh, the ensemble will sing for you and we invite you to sing. We also invite you to give digitally. Uh, your tithes and offering can be done at uh, mapleav.org slash giving, tithely, tithe.ly. Uh, you can send them in. You know how you can do You can drop them off Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 12.
From the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us go to God and pray together. Great word of life, great light of the world. Speak to us now, shine upon us, we pray. So when we look, we may see. When we listen, we may hear. But we don't want to be those who just see and hear. May our hearts be transformed by the power of your truth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And all God's people said amen. The word of the Lord comes to us this morning from the book of Galatians. That's over in the New Testament. I hope that you all at home will have your Bibles dust it off and in hand to read along. Galatians chapter 4, I'm going to begin with verse 1, verses 1 through 7. Here at Maple Avenue, we tend to stand as a way of showing respect for the word of the Lord, so if you desire in body and or in spirit, please feel free to stand with us. Galatians chapter 4. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property. But they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so yesterday, while most of us were probably catching our breath after our Christmas celebrations and events, we were hauling out the Canara, celebrating the opening day of a celebration called Kwanzaa, lighting the first black candle in the spirit of Yomoja. Yomoja means unity in Swahili, and it is the first principle, the first candle, the first thing that we acknowledge not only for the seven days of Kwanzaa, but also each day. And I'm sure Dr. Maulana Karinga didn't necessarily mean to attach the principle of unity to the wagon of the holiday we call Christmas. In fact, I know that Dr. Karinga uh, would offer up Kwanzaa and probably uh, be more dismissive of Christmas than many people would be for, for many, many reasons. Um, part of the timing for Kwanzaa has to do with the end of the year, 
um, acknowledging the work, acknowledging the energy, acknowledging the principles and the virtues that um, have brought us thus far through the year and that will also bring us into the next year. And I don't think that the organizers of the Revised Common Lectionary who offered up this text as our epistle text for this Sunday had any consideration of a word called eumosia, the first and central principle of this 54-year-old tradition that captures the best of the agrarian and communal aspects of African culture and life. But somehow, in my mind at least, they all seem to convert for this one day, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Umoja, Unity, Galatians, and us. You see, even though it was only a couple of days ago, Christmas is almost a distant memory. The holiday that preoccupied shop owners since July is now 50 and 75% off, ready to be cleared off of the shelves for the next bank-breaking holiday, New Year's Eve, Asian New Year, Valentine's Day. You know how it is. It's like this every year. We put away the urgings of the angel until next year. We put away the manger, the pondering of Mary and the eggnog. Christmas is over. And before long, we will begin to forget. Book of Galatians, Paul's stern and convincing letter to the first cluster of house churches he started comes to them because a group of Judaizers, people clinging to the law, abiding practices of the temple for salvation, had moved into the community and attempted to let the believers in Galatia forget Christmas to forget about how Christ had broken down the dividing wall between law and unlawful, between Jew and Gentile, between circumcised and uncircumcised, that Christ had come to call people together into emotion, indeed the unity of the church and not the law. Even Peter, Paul tells us in this book, had, 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 had lost his footing and had begun to take up some of the beliefs and the concepts of these tempters. Peter, the rock upon which the church would be built. Peter, who had once been on the rooftop and had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus himself, who declared unto him, rise, Peter, slay and eat. And Peter said, these things I do not eat. I will not touch anything that is unclean. And it was there where the revelation of God came to him to help him understand that what God says is clean is clean. And what God says is unclean is unclean. And only God determines what those things are. And this was the opening revelation that came to Peter about the, the welcoming of Gentiles and the fullness of the unity of the church that has come because of Christmas. Peter had, he had been a law-abiding citizen under the law of the temple. But then, then it came, he came later to understand Eumosia, that Christ had come, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem us from the law. Peter had forgotten Christmas and had began to reject and regret eating with Gentiles, began to again demand circumcision as an act of obedience to the law. And so the apostle Paul had to remind him and remind us, we who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles, know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one can be justified. Galatians 2. Paul was upset. If you read the letter, you can almost see him red-faced and, 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 and tossed in his spirit because they had forgotten Christmas. They had gone back to the tradition of the elders. They had gone back to self-sacrificing and efforts that hinge upon human effort and self-discipline alone. They had gone back to living as though Christmas didn't change everything for Jews and Gentiles alike. 
And you know how that is. I mean, look around. The news cycle hasn't changed since Christmas. The social media threads haven't changed since Christmas. Pretty soon the ornaments and the candy canes and the trees will be put away and gone and we get to forget about Christmas. We might not forget what we received under the tree and we might not forget what we wanted and we didn't get. And we might never forget Christmas 2020 and how different it was from any other Christmas we can remember. But Christmas in its truest, fullest meaning can be forgotten at least for 10 months before we start to do it all over again. Christmas, my friends, Christmas I'm talking about is the Christmas that I believe the Apostle Paul is talking about when he says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Christmas. This Christmas. This kind of Christmas must not be forgotten. It must not be forgotten that, 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 that in the fullness of time, that means when, 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 when it was at its peak, when it finally had come to the place and to fruition in the ways that God had intended in the fullness of time. God sent his son born of a woman under the law. You see, subject to the law of gestation. Subject to the process of birth, subject to effacing and crowning, subject to the provision of humans who couldn't even provide a simple bed for sweet little Jesus boy to lay in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under the law of life. Born under the law of the Roman Empire. This was no longer the land of King David where the monarchs of old had led. The sprawl of Rome had demands for taxes and census. Joseph and Mary and newborn Jesus was subject to the law of Rome under the law. Subject to the law of Caesar, a son of a God himself, whose icon, whose very image had power, who allowed the simple Hebrew people, Abraham's seed, to function in his territory as long as they didn't kick up too much dust. Shall we pay our taxes to Caesar? Somebody asked Jesus one day, and Jesus said, whose picture is on that coin? Give unto Caesar what is Caesar. Give unto God what is God, because he knew he was born under law, under the law of Caesar. Under the law of Herod, king of the Jews, much further from God than Saul, the first king, or David, the second king, or Solomon, the third king, or Josiah, the last great king. When he heard that the king of Jews had been born, and he himself being considered the king of Jews, he had to make known that this king was born under the law of the temple, born under the law of Herod. Jesus was born in the fullness of time. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under temple laws and the laws of the synagogue, upheld by Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, dietary codes, household rules, temple laws, Sabbath, clean and unclean. Jesus was born under all of that, born under the law that had been reviewed and redacted to make an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth satisfactory in the eyes of God, to make help being is only done out of convenience, making making it seem that if we simply look out for our own first, that that is acceptable to God, that blind people and sick people and women and Samaritans are not worthy of compassion or attention or 1 Corinthians 13 kind of loving. He was born under a law that had been reviewed and redacted and emptied of the purposes and the spirit with which God gave. At Christmas, friends, Jesus was born under the law. And the Apostle Paul is is urging the church in Galatia not to forget Christmas, that Jesus was born under the law for a purpose, to redeem those of us, all of us who are under the law. Redeem, yes, redeem, that religious word that we use even in our common language when it comes to redeeming our, our bottles and redeeming our cans. And, 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 and so it, it simply means to pay the necessary price. 
begins, redemption begins with an acknowledgement of the brokenness of the law, which is the reason Christ came in the first place, in the fullness of time. When the brokenness of the law was evident, when the, when the inability of humanity could keep the law in the fullness of time, Jesus came to redeem us by acknowledging the brokenness of the law and then secondly by fulfilling the law. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy it, but I have come to fulfill it. Jesus came in flesh and he defined what love is and is not. He defined who a neighbor is and is not. He defined the will of God for us. He helped us see and know what it means to be whole. Your faith has made you whole. What it is to live in freedom. Go your way and sin no more. What it is to live life abundantly. I've come that you might have just that life and have it more abundantly. He came to fulfill the law and pay the necessary price so that we can receive his spirit. I'm afraid maybe camp counselors and the evangelical enthusiasts got it wrong. We were redeemed not just to go to heaven, not just to avoid hell, not just to see our loved ones one day. We are redeemed so that the Spirit of Christ might dwell in us. Yes. He sent forth the Spirit of Shalom, the very Spirit of Himself the Spirit of Christ into our hearts. And what it does for our hearts is it makes our hearts tender before God. What it does is it, 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 it shifts our association with God. It, it, it's not that God doesn't continue to be Elohim as he was to Abram or, or El Roy, the God who provides for Hagar or, or the great high priest of Melchizedek or Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. But the spirit of Mary's little baby, sweet little Jesus boy, tenderizes our hearts towards God by his spirit and tenderizes God's heart towards us as God's people so that our association with God shifts. And now our hearts cry out, Abba, Daddy, Dad, that affectionate, tender voice and association with God. Listen, I used to be a daddy's girl. And for the longest in my life, he was, a, he was my hero. He was my greatest affection. I couldn't wait to see him on the weekends when he would be home from work. I, I'd climb in his lap to watch TV, and I, I'd sit on the sink while he would shave. I'd dance with him to the music on the radio and share my secrets with him, not because he was my father, because he was my provider, because he was my disciplinarian, but because my heart was tender toward him. He was my, he was my daddy. And Abba is that, it's, it's, a, it's affectionate. It's the part of God that has a lap. The part of God that has a dance. The part of God that, that longs with delight to, to be with and to be proud of. And so we are his children. Tender and worthy of every single good thing God if God doesn't have it, we shouldn't want it. If God has it for us, we have every single right to it. Not by law or by performance, but by inheritance. We are his. And he is ours. This, my friends, is what we must remember in the next days, weeks, and months. That in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because we are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So we are no longer slaves, but children. And if children, then also an heir through God, God is trusting us. 
not to forget Christmas. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your word, the manifestation of your spirit in us. Break the bricks off of our hearts, O oh God. Find a heart of flesh, tender, conducive to the seeds of your word. They may go forth, go down deep like a tree planted by rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in its season, fruit with seed in it, fruit that will last. This is our desire. In the name of Jesus Christ, our beloved Savior and Lord, who is worthy of all glory, who lives and reigns with you in the spirit, world without end. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. So beloved of God, as we prepare to go forth from this place to wherever it is God is leading us in mind, body, and spirit, may we go knowing we do not go alone. God goes with us and we go together. And so may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ, whose spirit dwells in us, and the comfort and hope of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, be, and abide with all of us, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, as we go in peace. Amen.